Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss effect of ocean currents on global weather patterns. Now we know that our equator receives maximum amount of energy from the sun, while the polar regions do not receive that much amount of solar energy. This line indicates the amount of solar energy received by the whole earth. So we see that at the equator we receive maximum amount of energy while in the polar region this amount of energy received from sun decreases. This blue line indicates the amount of energy radiated from us. Again we see that the maximum amount of energy is radiated from the equator while little less amount of energy is radiated from the polar regions. But we see that here there is an energy surplus that is the amount of energy received is more than the amount of energy given back to the space. While in the polar regions, we can easily see that the amount of energy received is less than the amount of energy uh, traded back to the space. So in this region, there is an energy surplus and in the polar regions, there is an energy deficit. We have earlier seen that there are these uh, air circular patterns, Hedley cell, Ferrell cell, and polar cell which help in distributing the surplus energy from the equator region towards the polar region. Ocean currents also help in this phenomena. We know that the ocean currents, the equatorial ocean currents, they carry heat from the equatorial region and slowly with the help of uh, other streams and other ocean currents, this heat is brought towards the polar region. In the Atlantic Ocean, we see that Gulf Stream which starts from the Gulf of Mexico, it brings equatorial heat toward the Norwegian region. This is how heat is distributed by the surface ocean currents. In fact, there is another ocean current which is called thermohaline ocean currents, which involves surface water as well as deep currents. And this is one singular uh, conveyor belt of water which distributes heat right from the equator to different oceans. So this is how the ocean current helps in distributing heat from the equatorial region towards the polar region. Here we can see the summary of what we have just discussed that the ocean current acts as a conveyor belt. It absorbs heat in the tropical region and carries it to the polar region. It helps in redistribution of heat. Both surface currents as well as the deep currents in thermal and circulation help in the process of distribution of heat. The warm ocean currents help in bringing precipitation to the eastern margin of continents in tropical region. Here we can see all the ocean currents. The warm ocean currents are given by yellow color, while the cold ocean currents are shown by blue color. Now if we concentrate on the highlighted ocean currents, we can see that these are in the tropical regions and we have this warm ocean current over here, warm ocean current over here, warm ocean current in all these regions. Now, these warm ocean currents have a lot of evaporation. They experience a lot of evaporation. So the air adjoining or flowing over these warm currents have a lot of moisture in these. When this air flows over these warm ocean currents and reaches the land margins, it gives a lot of rain in the coastal regions. And therefore, the warm ocean currents helps in bringing rainfall to the adjoining coastal areas. Cold currents cause arid climate on western margin of continents in tropical region. Here, in the highlighted regions, we can see cold ocean currents. All these are examples of cold ocean currents. Now, when wind flows over these cold ocean currents, the moisture in the wind is condensed to form fog because they are flowing over the cold ocean currents. These winds, when they reach the coastal margins, they have no moisture left in them. Therefore, they do not bring any rainfall to these regions. And therefore, we see that the coastal regions adjoining these cold ocean currents are generally desert-like situations. You can see that here there is Kalari Desert, here we have Sahara Desert, Mojave Desert, Atacama Desert, and here we have West Australian Deserts. So all these deserts are lying beside the cold ocean currents. Now the ocean currents increases temperature of western margin of continents in higher latitudes. Here we can see North Atlantic current which is an extension of Gulf Stream current. 
Now, this Gulf Stream current brings equatorial hot water or warm water, which is further carried to the polar regions by this North Atlantic current and Norwegian current. Moreover, in the Pacific also we can see that Kurosio current brings the equatorial warm water in the polar regions which further carries on as the Lucian current and Alaskan current. Now, if we compare two cities, one located in uh, England, which is London, and second located in Canada, that is Halifax, both are almost at same latitudes. But if you compare the temperature profile, we can clearly see that the temperature of Halifax has at least three months of sub-zero temperature, while the London, even though being on the same latitude, does not cross the zero mark. And this is mainly because of the warm water currents which is brought by the North Atlantic drift towards this region. Here we can see the summary of what we just discussed that the warm current keeps climate warm for the western coast in higher latitudes. Europe, especially Great Britain, it never crosses below 0 degrees Celsius because of the warm waters brought by North Atlantic drift. However, on similar latitudes, Canada temperature falls below 0 degrees Celsius. Norway, which is located near to the Arctic Circle, even there the ports remain ice-free and this is mainly because of the North Atlantic drift and Norwegian current because they bring warm waters from the equatorial regions. So this is how the ocean currents help to keep the western margins of continents warm in higher latitudes. Now the ocean currents also increases temperature of eastern coasts in mid latitudes. So if we see here, we have warm ocean currents. Even here, there is warm ocean currents near Japan. Now these warm currents also increase the temperature of the eastern margin of these continents in mid latitude. So here you will see that the temperature will be slightly higher compared to cities on same latitude on western margin. Now mixing of cold and warm currents produces favorable climate for fishing. We know that there are certain regions where warm and cold water meets. These are the highlighted regions where we can see that cold oceanic current and warm oceanic current meet with each other. Now because of this, the nutrients are upwind, they are brought to the surface. Moreover, the cold ocean currents carry more amount of nutrients compared to the warm ocean currents. When the mixing of these two ocean currents occur, the warm ocean currents provides favorable temperature while the cold ocean currents provide favorable nutrients. And that is why in these regions we see that there are so many fishes and the fishery industries are well developed in these regions. Now let's try to understand why cold water has more nutrients. This is the temperature profile of sea at equator and this is the temperature profile of sea at the polar region. We can see over here that at the, sum at the surface the temperature is very high but as the depth increases the temperature falls. So there is a clear difference in temperature at the surface and at the depth. And the temperature at the surface is high, so the water is less dense. It will not sink. So there is very clear vertical stratification based on temperature. And therefore there is very little mixing of water. That is vertical mixing of water is very less in the seas at equator. But in the polar regions we can see that the temperature profile is almost straight. And this allows vertical mixing of water. Therefore, the nutrients from the ground below or from the ocean floor can rise up to the surface. If there are more nutrients at the surface, more phytoplanktons will exist and therefore there will be more zooplankton and there will be more fishes. So this is why the cold seas have more nutrients compared to the warm seas. So we have already seen that the mixing of warm and cold currents provides good fishing grounds, mainly because cold currents have high amount of phytoplanktons and nutrients because vertical mixing occurs in them and the warm water provides a favorable temperature for fishes. So we see that when warm and cold currents meet, nutrients are provided by the cold currents while warm temperature or favorable temperature is provided by the warm water currents. Fog is also formed at this region mainly because the warm ocean currents have a lot of moisture. When this air containing moisture comes in contact with the cold ocean currents, this water condenses to form fog. And that is why in these regions we see a lot of fog. Warm currents also help coral reefs spread on eastern coasts in the higher latitudes. 
Now we know that one of the important conditions for existence of coral reefs is that the water temperature should be between this range. Now, because of these warm currents, we carry warm water in higher latitudes. And therefore, we see that on the eastern margin, even in higher latitudes, as far as Japan, we can see that coral reefs can exist. Similarly, if you see on the western margin of continents, because of the cold ocean currents flowing over here, we do not find any reefs over here. You can see that there are no reefs over here. Similarly, we see that there are very few spots of reefs on the western margin of these continents. But when we come to the eastern margin of continents, because of this warm ocean currents, we see that large amount of coral reefs exist over here. So this is the summary of what we just discussed, that warm currents help coral reefs survive in high latitudes. Warm, warm ocean currents provide corals with warm water having optimum temperature and salinity. This help corals survive in higher latitudes as far as Japan. Therefore, Japan corals survive due to warm Kurosio current. Similarly, Great Barrier Reef of Australia gets warm water from the East Australian current. I hope I was able to explain you how ocean currents affect global weather patterns. If you have any doubts in this topic, please ask in the comments. If you have liked this video, then please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. And if you like what we are doing and want to contribute to it, then you can use the QR code given over here.